that's going to be two, three ounces at least, right? But if they're 25 or 30 calories an ounce, that's going to be, you know, 50 or 75 calories for three ounces versus at 150 for three ounces, that's 450 calories. Hi, welcome to the Judy Terrell Show, where I explore topics intended to optimize everybody 50, 60, 70, and above. Welcome, everybody. Are you somebody who says to yourself, I'm doing everything right, and yet I still can't lose weight? Well, then you are in the right place. Welcome, everybody. This is my podcast series on, you know, how ultra-processed foods and foods in general are making us struggle to lose weight, all right? This is episode number one out of a six-part series, and in today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about calorie density, all right? Calorie density is basically how many calories per ounce of the food that you're eating, and higher the calorie density, the more apt this food is going to be something that is going to, you're going to struggle to keep within this right portion for you to be able to manage your weight, all right, so let me dig down into that a little bit, okay? So I have a chart that I give to my clients when I'm working with them one-on-one, -on -one, and basically what it is is I put in all the foods that we generally eat in a hierarchical order and how many calories per ounce they are, one ounce, one ounce of the food and how many calories each one is, and I went from lowest to highest, okay? And this is an important thing for you to know if you're trying to you know, lose weight or manage your weight, um, because if we're eating a food, for instance, that is 140 calories for one ounce, then it takes a certain amount of volume for us to get full, right? And for us to feel satisfied. And so let's just say it's four ounces of something. And if you're eating four ounces of something that is 140 calories an ounce, all right, that is going to be 560 calories for four ounces. If you're eating something that is 25 calories per ounce and you eat four ounces, that is going to be 100 calories. So 560 versus 100 for the same volume, four ounces of food, is going to be a dramatically different, you know, end result of weight. You know, whether you're gaining weight or losing weight or are stuck and not able to like lose the weight, even though you think you're doing everything right. Because let me give you a couple of illustrations as to how this happens. I hear this all the time from my individual clients. They're constantly texting me the nutrition panels of foods when they're in the grocery store saying, hey, what do you think of this product? Is this good? Can, is this, would this be good for my plan? And I always do the analysis. I'm looking at the serve. I'm looking at how many calories per ounce. And an ounce, by the way, is 26.8 uh, grams. So sometimes I'll put gram, it'll say 30 grams serving. Well, what does that mean? That's approximately an ounce, okay? Or it might say four ounce serving, all right, for this amount of calories. And then you have to do a little math and divide four into, let's say, 150 to figure out how many calories for one ounce. So you got to be able to figure out how many calories for one ounce. And then you do a comparison. If anything is over 50 calories per ounce, then I'm going to tell you this should be something that you should be eating every so often and not one of your go-tos, especially for a snack, because I know me, for instance, I'm going to need four or five ounces of something in order for me to even remotely like kind of take the edge off my hunger, right? So if I'm eating something that's 140 calories, I'm going to, it's going to be four ounces is going to be 560 like we just did. And I don't have a budget for that for my snack, 560 calories. I might have a budget for 100 or 200. So the calorie density is, can, can trip us up. So back to my clients, they'll send me a picture of like this gluten-free cracker and it'll say 140 calories for 26.8 grams or 30 grams. All right. I'm like, okay, that's one ounce. That's 140 calories an ounce. All right. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's gluten free, 100% whole grain. Um, Your second50.life is my virtual platform that is designed for both men and women over 50 and 60, 70, and 80. And it includes pre recorded video information on exercise and how to do it whether you're fit and in good health or if you have bad knees, bad shoulders, a bad back, whatever. It includes information on how to eat for weight management and how to eat for health management. It includes information on the psychology of aging and what do we need to do in our heads 
Because let's face it, this aging thing is not for the faint of heart. So your second50.life is a virtual platform of resources that you can access at your own leisure, but it also includes two times a month live video coaching with me so that you can bring your own individual questions and get individual coaching as well as have access to all the information on the pre-recorded videos. So please check it out because we're all in this together and we got this. You know, a veggie chip versus a potato chip, you know, like there's these high-end ones that are made from beets and taro, awesome. But they are, they are swimming in oil. They've been dropped into a vat of oil. And that is why when you look at that serving size and it says one ounce will be 150 calories. That is just too calorically dense for you to use as a regular snack. Um, veggie sticks, I get that a lot from people, especially who have kids, they're trying to get a healthy snack for them to have a crunchy snack, but they are 140 or 130 calories per ounce. That is high. If you look on my chart here, you know, that's on the low level down here. I'm gonna throw something else under the bus, okay? Nuts. I have so many of my health conscious clients saying to me, well, I'm snacking on nuts. And I cringe because if they're struggling with weight and they can't lose it, one handful of nuts is one ounce and that's 180 calories. Are they healthy? Absolutely. Do they have good omega-3s and very healthy oils? Absolutely. Um, are they low in sugar, or low in carb, if you're following that criteria? Absolutely. Are they very calorie dense and are they gonna add up really fast and then probably block your weight loss if you're trying to get a deficit for the day? Absolutely. That's not going to be your better choice. All right. So what are some examples that would be better than these higher calorie density choices? If you don't have an air fryer, go get one and then get a mandolin or a very like take a knife and cut potato, really thin chips or carrots, really thin chips or beets, really thin chips, plantains, really thin chips. All right. Little rounds, really thin, as thin as you can get them. And then um, spray, get a uh, avocado oil spray and just do a couple spritzes. So now those vegetables I just talked about, they're about 20 calories per ounce. We're adding a little bit of oil. Let's bring it up to about 25 calories per ounce. Put a little salt, maybe a little chili powder. And then you're either going to put that under a broiler or if you have the air fryer, love the air fryer, put them in the air fryer, you know, for three minutes, five minutes and crisp them up. Now you've got a chip that is 30 calories an ounce. Okay. And comparing those to these high end, very expensive, you know, uh, chips that you're buying that are 140 calories an ounce, you're going to be just as satisfied with the ones that you just made in the air fryer. And you're going to eat the same amount. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be two, three ounces at least, right? But if they're 25 or 30 calories an ounce, that's going to be, you know, 50 or 75 calories for three ounces versus at 150 for three ounces, that's 450 calories. So you see what I'm illustrating? So calorie density, all right? You've got to figure out how many calories per ounce something is. It's easy to do that math and then compare that and try and stay at 75 or lower for the foods that you're using as go-tos. And that right there is going to be a major weight loss and weight management tool. All right, everybody, this is episode one in a six-part series on I'm doing everything right, but why am I not losing weight? And specifically about the like the food aspects and what do we need to do to help you know fix that so you can get your goals for your body. All right, this is episode number one. I hope I'm going to see you in the next five episodes. And in the meantime, we got this eating thing, everybody, and I'll see you soon. And if you'd like to have access to some of my additional resources, I can be found at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and on my website, www.judyterrell.com.